Okay. Okay, that's her release. Copy. Uh, Atlantic clear of the vessel. Copy it, Bridge copies. Okay, so now we're going to turn this one on. This is an audio slate for dive H1990. UTC time is 512. Mark.
Yeah, correct. Tech nav. Ah. Copy, you see you're at five zero meters. Should we hold here or uh, take control? Copy that. Taking uh, Atlanta. ROV, are we good to hold position here? Uh, yeah, we're right now we're headed away from the dive start, so holding position helps us get back. Bridge, now we can hold position here. We can switch back to uh, the intercom system. Thanks. Oh, actually, TJ still on the witch. Uh, bridge nav. Bridge nav. Sorry, if you could keep on the radio uh, while TJ's down on the winch. Thanks. Yeah, 1540.6, yeah, that's what you're seeing. Oh, no, we can, we can continue. Okay, yeah, yeah, no problem. Go ahead, Doc. Copy that, two zero zero meters. Okay, we're diving.
Tech nav. Just past two zero zero meters. Copy. Hello, back row. What's going on in the back row? Doing back row stuff. <laughs> Roger. Science is sciencing. How's things up there? As for folks watching at home, we're doing a lot of training right now. A little quieter than normal. All right, good evening, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us aboard the EV Nautilus. We are currently starting our expedition NA-153 to Johnston Atoll. We have currently opened up the question uh, box, so if any of you are curious about anything, have any questions that you'd like to ask us, please feel free to do so. We have opened up the science party line and we would love to hear from you. Once again, thanks so much for joining us this evening. My name is Brittany. I am one of the science communication fellows aboard the EV Nautilus. I'm joining, um, I'm from California, Los Angeles, California, and I'm super, super excited to be here. It's my very first time aboard the ship. Uh, we also have lots of other wonderful people aboard. I'm gonna give them a chance to introduce themselves here in just a moment, but we're still getting those ROVs situated in the water. They're currently making their descent, reaching a maximum of 2,400 meters on this current dive. So once again, thank you all so much for joining us. Looking forward to chatting. All right, so I am getting some messages in the chat. Thank you all so much for participating and joining us. Hello, Mrs. Jones, if you're still watching, it's so great to hear from you. Hi, mom, hi, dad, <laughs> and hello, Jamil. Um, so again, we are getting started on our dive here at Johnston Atoll. This is NA-153. And like I said, I'm not the only one here in the control room. Obviously, if you're watching online, you can see that there are plenty of people that are making this trip happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to some of my friends over here and see if they wanna say hi and introduce themselves a little bit. So I'm gonna start off with my friend over on my right-hand side. This is Nick. Nick, you wanna tell us what you're doing aboard? Hi, uh, yeah, thanks, Brittany. Uh, my name's Nick Foresta. I'm from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Uh, I work with the uh, geochronology uh, lab over there and we're dating rocks in the uh, uh, McDonald Seamount, as well as over here in the Lion Islands. I'll go, I'll go next. Uh, my name is Steve Oskovich. I'm the watch lead and biology science lead for uh, this cruise and for the 4 to 8 watch. So I uh, am going to be hoping to fulfill our dive plan for today, um, where we're going to visit a never-before-explored seamount. Um, but in the meanwhile, we'll be looking at some amazing blue water and all the animals that live in it as we approach the sea floor in the next uh, hour or so. Hi, my name is Bronwyn Kay. I'm an ocean science intern aboard the Nautilus for this mission. I am in charge of data logging and I will be writing down uh, everything notable that we come across in this dive. All 
All right, thank you all so much for introducing yourselves a little bit. I'm getting some more uh, messages in the chat. Some people are joining from Delaware. Hello from Delaware, that's awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. And we also had a question, how many divers are in the ROV at one time? So actually the answer is zero. We do not have any divers whatsoever that are inside of the ROVs. All of the people that are controlling the ROV are in this room with me right now. So we are all aboard the ship. There is not a single person inside of the ROV. So you can think of it kind of like the ROVs are down in the depths and then we have very, very special, a very specialized team aboard the Nautilus who is controlling the ROVs from the ship um, and they're doing so that way. So again, we are making our descent and the ROV should be getting to about 2,400 meters in depth. <laughs> Steve is already getting some shout outs. Science Steve, here we go. What happened? I said you're, Science <laughs> you're already Steve. getting some shout outs. Oh. These people are pumped. So glad to be back in the van this time. <laughs> Not Steve. as pumped as I am. <laughs> this is my first time Can in the van with voice? Science Steve, so I'm, yeah. I'm ready for some science. I think we could probably do front row introductions too if you Are we ready? Like, yeah, let's yeah. go for it. Let's yeah, get from the front row. It. Thank you. Cool. Uh, I'll start. Samantha Wishnack, navigator, also the uh, operations coordinator for the Ocean Exploration Trust. Over uh, to you, Gabby. Uh, Gabby Inglis. Um, I'm sitting in the pilot seat. Woo! Woo! <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to leave it here. Um, as far as like speed goes, I, uh, I've been like just sort of slowly going, increasing speed, but I think this is probably pretty good, pretty close to as fast as we'll go without going over Price is Right rules <laughs> for descent speed. I like that. <laughs> Thanks. I just thought of it just now. Yeah. <laughs> um, just workshopping it here. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah. Okay. Logan, did you introduce yourself yet? Yeah, no, she, yeah, she went. She went. Oh. Cool. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Logan Ossenjuk, um, and I am the video engineering intern for NA-153. I'm Dave Robertson. I'm the lead video engineer. I'm down here at the uh, end uh, training Logan on this uh, watch and soon. I hope that he'll be able to do this all by himself to, so that I'll be able to sleep at night. Because <laughs> I've got two people that I'm training this uh, this <laughs> late. Sleep is important. Hi, I'm Banos. I'm the other video engineer. Dave is training us. So I'm at the 12 to 4 watts. Nice. This is a high concentration of video engineers. <laughs> Max concentration. We come in numbers. <laughs> Fully saturated with video engineers. <laughs> Excellent. Did we miss anybody? Anyone hiding? I think we're all good. So, Science Steve, can you tell us why exactly we are here at Johnston Atoll? in order to do some science? What are we exactly looking for when we're here in this uh, specific spot? Sure. So we have driven three days or so southwest of Honolulu, Hawaii, uh, over the past few days of transit to get out to one of the most remote uh, oceanic locations on Earth, which is near Johnston Atoll. Um, we are quite a ways north of the atoll, maybe about uh, I would say six hours or so, somewhere six to seven hours north of the atoll at a seamount that's quite isolated from Johnston Atoll proper. Um, and this area has been a target of exploration because uh, many of the seamounts and uh, deeper uh, features of this area uh, have been totally unexplored and in some cases completely unmapped. Um, this particular site has been previously mapped and it was kind of an easy target for us to pick as our first dive, uh, allowing us to get in the water. It's previously mapped by another uh, expeditions that have passed through here. Um, so we can put our vehicles in the water here and explore this site 
both to characterize the biology that we find on the seafloor as well as the geology by sampling rocks and uh, making observations of what the substrate looks like along our dive track today. So our aim for this dive is to start uh, at around 2,400 meters and work up to the seamount summit at around 1,500 meters. Uh, this is a geotype seamount, although the, the flat top of the seamount is quite narrow, only about two kilometers wide. Um, making it a relatively high profile seamount, so steep, sl steep sides uh, and pretty narrow top. And along our route, we're just going to be uh, observing instances of biology, potentially uh, imaging and collecting rock samples, as well as potential uh, biological specimens of interest, like potential new species or things that might represent range extensions or help us characterize the seafloor life in this area. Uh, and when we get to the top, hopefully sometime tomorrow midday-ish, uh, or maybe even afternoon, um, we hope to see uh, the top of the seamount and determine whether it may have possibly contained uh, coral reef material at one point in time, whether it's a, a carbonate-capped geo or if it's some other type of feature. So it's a little bit of a mystery. We have uh, quite a bit of ways to go. We're traveling about three and... 3.2 kilometers or so across uh, the seamount landscape here, and uh, see what we find. Thank you so much, Science Steve. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was great. Yeah, so I'm getting some questions in the chat. Are we going to expect to see any creatures on the way down? Um, it's a possibility. You know, the ocean is full of creatures. We are in a very, very, very tiny part of the ocean, so you never know. But as we're descending, you might notice that you might see some teeny, tiny little white flecks um, all over the screen. Those are, it's what we call marine snow. So essentially, as the organisms in the ocean uh, slough off their scales, or if they poop, <laughs> you know, whatever that is, um, it's just, mar it's, um, it's organic material that is within the water column that we are able to see. So a lot of those li tiny little white specks that you're seeing, that's what we call marine snow. And we're definitely gonna see quite a bit of that um, on all of our dives. I'm and hoping for squid. And squid, yes. Yeah. So a squid for Samantha. <laughs> those of you who know me really well know I would love to see a whale. You'll see me lose it if we see a whale, but I'm not holding my breath for that one. <laughs> But, but the whale will be. The, yeah. <laughs> the whale will be, for Whoa, sure. Whoa, Steve. <laughs> Starting strong. Coming in hot. Yep. So that was just the test. Uh, <laughs> test the waters? Te test the waters. Uh, <laughs> fish. Yeah, a little tiny squiggly fishy right there. But uh, let's see what else do we have in the chat. Uh, waypoint one is here. Um, it is about about 130 meters away. Oops, sorry. So currently we are able to see Hercules's camera that is showing what Hercules is seeing as it's making its descent to um, that depth of 2,400 meters. And can anybody tell me about how long are we expecting for this, um, for how long are we expecting to see Hercules go down before we reach that, uh, that point that we're trying to get to? Typically, it's about a thousand meters an hour. 
so. Oh, great. Even better. Perfect. Actually, say that on. Oh, there SPL. you go. You can say it again. <laughs> 1.5 hours. Thank you so great. much, Gabby. All mm -hmm. right, so about an hour and a half for those of you who are wondering how long it's going to take for us to reach that destination. like a nice sunset out there. Yeah, it is nice. Um, wire cam. Mm-hmm. Love it. Love the upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> Love what you've done with the place. <laughs> yeah, wire cam's looking really nice. Let's see what we've got. Nope. Okay. Okay, um, so is it just that it was like too blown out, like too light? Okay, so there's lights we can turn off. Um, there's also, at some, at some point there was iris control. Is that a cat floating behind the uh, the Niskin balls? Yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. Yeah. Samantha, I thought you said, was that a cat floating? <laughs> <laughs> I was very concerned. For I for moment. sure heard cat. <laughs> okay. Maybe in the 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. Uh, shift when we're all a little loopy, oh, we might yeah. see a cat, but hopefully not now. <laughs> It's going to be a little nuts. So, oh, wow. looking forward That's to it. That's not. <clears throat> Can anybody answer this question? Um, I do not have this information, but somebody is wondering how old is Hercules and where else has it been? I know that we're about to, I think we're going to potentially have the 1,000th dive of Hercules on this expedition, but other than that, I'm, I'm not sure how old the ROV is. Um, uh, yeah. Well, it's uh, it's 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 not straightforward. Uh, several of the components are are quite old, on the order of you know maybe 20 years or so. But um, it was recently rebuilt over winter this year, so most of the um, frame and structure is recent, within a year old. But uh, yeah, everything still works fine. Yeah, and Hercules has been around the world um, on both Nautilus and other ships. Nautilus started in the Mediterranean in the Black Sea in 2008, no, 2008, nine, yeah? You're not on SPL, which is good because Gab <laughs> Gabby's got all the Nautilus history. <laughs> in A, we were in on Endeavor, Okay, I think. So I think it started in 2009. And uh, yeah, the ship moved from the Mediterranean down the Atlantic into the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. And then in 2015 came through the Panama Canal into the Pacific. But prior to that, Hercules had um, been on other ships as well. So it's quite a long career. Hercules was built in the 90s. I want to say Argus was built in 99 and Herc 
the the code for Herc says 2002 on it. Oh, okay. Um, but that doesn't. It may have been built before that. Yeah. Hmm. So as as Steve mentioned, you know, there's always maintenance happening. So it's hard to say exactly how old any ROV is because it's constantly parts are being replaced and and upgraded. So. The code is, of course, descended from early JSON code, which the earliest date I've seen it is 1995. Interesting. Ooh, interesting. Okay. So we could make a phylogenetic tree of ROVs <laughs> using <laughs> code and structure. Yes. There's oh, definitely, yeah, there's yeah. definitely, because there's three that were developed together. There was JSON, ISIS, and Herc. And so there's definitely enough to create a full taxonomy. So that's why ISIS shows up in various places. In the Thanks for using those biology words. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Helps me feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah. We can use clades Easing if you want. You like, yeah. you can go high tech. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how we can well, adapt that for geology, though. Two-bodied system would be a clade, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're getting into <laughs> Save Hey, you asked. You, you started it. <laughs> But as, as you all know, that everything becomes a crab eventually, and Hercules is well on its way. Yeah, <laughs> that's Every, great. That's my favorite thing about evolution. Every the five times the crabs have evolved, at least. <laughs> everything becomes a crab? Yeah, that, uh, at least arthropods do. I mean, humans aren't going to become crabs, but like, I guess okay. never say never. Yeah. yeah. Steve, care to weigh in? Devolved quickly. <laughs> I'll leave that for the 8 to 12 watch. This is a perfect question for the next watch. Okay. Okay. There's actually a name for it. Carcinization. Wow. Yeah. That makes sense. Very nice. The tendency to uh, evolve crab-like forms. Okay, we'll be on high alert then this cruise. <laughs> if any of us start to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, some of you are wondering um, what we're doing out here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering that too. No, the, we are actually using two ROVs, right? So we've been talking quite a yes. bit about Hercules, which is the big yellow ROV that you might have uh, seen us uh, deploy just a few minutes ago. But then um, in addition to Hercules, there's also Argus, or excuse me, Atalanta. Um, so Atalanta is kind of like Hercules' sidekick, I guess you could say. So Atalanta hovers above Hercules. They are tethered together still, but um, Atalanta is above Hercules and it's able to, uh, I guess, be able to show where Hercules is in the body of water. So it's just kind of like an eyes, uh, an eye view on Hercules in the water since we are not able to see around. Kind of like a dive buddy. Like a dive buddy. It's really yep. cute to think about it that way. Your, your dive buddy will always be able to pull you out of a sticky situation. Aww. Somebody's asking, what does everything becomes a crab mean? And I, I have that exact same question. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm also curious what this name is. Is it not like Crabolution? It's got it. <laughs> so there, there's an idea, there's a hypothesis that that uh, crabs, the crab body plan has uh, evolved independently in different lineages several times. Uh, which suggests that there's something really advantageous about the typical crab you might think of. Um, so I would suggest everyone else do their research at home <laughs> <laughs> on that. Giving us homework. And Steve, what was the term again? Carcin Carcinization. 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 Cool.
We are appro approaching uh, what time of it? What time we got? Uh, approaching a watch change here in the next 10 minutes, so we may hear some commotion. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Yeah, so currently the voices that you hear are on the four to eight watch. And in just a few minutes, we're gonna be switching over to the next watch. So there's gonna be a different um, crew coming in for eight to 12, and then another one coming in from 12 to four. And then you'll hear us back again from four to eight. So that's how that works when we're doing these dives. Um, so this dive is expected to be about 18 hours. So no, <laughs> we're not all gonna be sitting in these seats for 18 hours straight. We do have a rotation. So our, uh, our watch is coming to an end here in just a few minutes. And then soon you're gonna be meeting some new friends. Once again, we are expecting this descent to take some time, um, probably looking at about an hour, hour and 15 minutes at this point. Um, we are making our way down to about 2,400 meters deep. And this uh, particular dive, we are interested in looking at a uh, geode. Excuse me, a, I'm not pronouncing it correctly. How geode. Geode. <laughs> geode is a uh, something else. There may be geodes <laughs> in the geode. Awesome. <laughs> That's actually could could happen. Yeah. We are joined by some scientists ashore as well. Uh, we can't fit all of the world's expertise in deep sea biology and geology and oceanography on our ship, but we do have a presence of um, groups of scientists ashore joining us by chat, providing their expertise voluntarily and helping to enrich our stream. So somebody is mentioning, isn't the sea floor extremely dark? And the answer to that is yes, it is very, 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 very dark. And so because of that, we do have um, multiple lights on the ROVs. And so that way the area that they are exploring can be illuminated and they can see exactly what is around them, um, both biologically as well as if we're looking at the geological aspect of the ocean floor as well. So we got that light covered by attaching it to the ROVs. Otherwise, it would be <laughs> very hard to be uh, doing this exploration. All right, it looks like it's about time for us to make our switch out. I just wanted to say thank you so much, Jeannie, Miss Isang, Uncle Lee, Aunt Joyce, thanks so much for tuning in, and everybody else. Um, I'm turning it over to Stephanie, who's going to take over in just a moment, and I will be back at 4 a.m. <laughs> so take care, everybody, and happy exploring. Thank you so much.
SPL check one, two. Gotcha. Thank you. Trevor. Hello, go for Trevor. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, my iris is wide open on her, Zeus. It looks like maybe some of the lights got. Uh, right now off, we or? have, we have, <laughs> we have upper and mids on. We have down secure. Okay, that's fine. So that's just to re reduce this glareage. Oh yeah, those things. That's a terrible place. Yeah. To, yes. Copy that. Just coming on. I mean, I was on shift sort of for the launch and, and having Logan do his first launch and, and uh, not yeah. paying attention to all kinds of other stuff. So Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. Well, here we are. Here we are. Hello. Hey. How you doing? I'm party lining. I'm on it. You're swimming in it. Party. Hello, everyone tuning in. Welcome to the 8 to 12 watch. I am Stephanie, a natural science and children's illustrator, coming to you as the science communication fellow here aboard the Nautilus. We are currently descending Hercules down to 2,400 meters, which should take about another hour or so. Um, yeah, right. Let's introduce our watch. If we want to go down to uh, Rob, our lead scientist for the watch. Yeah, uh, this is Rob Colony. I'm the uh, watch leader for the uh, 8 to 12. I'm also the geologic lead on this uh, expedition. And uh, looking forward to chatting with people and uh, answering some questions and trying to guide you along in the geology and uh, then I'll hand it over to my biology specialist. Hello. Hello everyone. This is Paula Rodriguez. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at Harvard University at the MCC. I'm a Christian biologist. Um, I'm all squad lobsters. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be around trying to answer all of your questions. Hi everyone, I'm Maronke Harris. I am the science manager in training on board the Nautilus right now and off the Nautilus. I'm a PhD student in oceanography at uh, the University of Victoria up in Canada. What do you see? Oh, on the deck? Yeah. When you're done with this, can you put that back to a gauge cam, please? Front row, if you want to introduce yourselves. I'm Trevor. I'm a guy. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> I am Elias, and um, I'm a graduate student at the University of um, New Hampshire, majoring in ocean engineering, ocean mapping. And um, I'm working on board uh, EV Nautilus as a um, navigator and um, ocean mapper. I suppose I could do a better job. <laughs> I'm Trevor. I'm in the Herc seat, sailing as ROV lead. Uh, I'm from also Vancouver Island in Canada. And that's all I got, I think. Uh, OK. I'm Annabelle. I'm in the Atalanta seat. And I'm the ROV intern. I'm an ecological engineering undergraduate at Oregon State University. Go Beavs. Go Beavs. 
My name is Dave Robertson. I'm a lead video engineer on uh, this uh, expedition and uh, I'm training two new folks. So this is my regular watch, 8 to 12. I'll be on all three watches today. So if you see me, I'll be sleepy. If you don't see me, I'll be asleep. <laughs> and next to me is... Hi, my name is Panos. Uh, David training me. I'm a junior video engineer. Um, yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Excellent, and that's our 8 to 12 watch. Um, the questions are open. If you're on watching from nautiluslive.org, feel free to send us a message, um, and we'll try to answer them as we can. All right, we're getting some questions in the chat. Um, someone asked, uh, can either vehicles get lost and are there safety measures um, put in place so they don't get lost and they can recover if that does happen? Um, so the vehicles are tethered to the ship, but I'm gonna let the ROV pilots answer that question. They will have more information. Uh, lost, good question. What is lost? <laughs> <laughs> We know where we are through acoustic navigation instruments and they send out a little signal that tells the ship where they are. So we kind of always know where they are. But let's say those instruments die for some reason, battery goes dead or whatever. We still know where we are because we're at the end of the wire. Let's say we're not at the end of the wire all of a sudden, hypothetically. We would be able to find the ROVs based on where they last were with their last known target. So, are we ever truly lost? It's a what very is philosophical lost can never be found. question. I want to say that's deep, Trevor, but that that <laughs> might oh. be a pun. Rob would say things like that. <laughs> Someone else asked, is Hercules down the whole time or will you pull it up occasionally? Um, Hercules is our main exploration vehicle, so um, whenever we're live and diving, Hercules will be down. Um, this dive is gonna be 18 hours, so Hercules will be down the whole time and then we'll pull him back up um, and get ready for the next dive whenever that happens.
So Trevor, has uh, Herc ever been separated from its tether? As far as I'm aware, Herc has always been attached to the sled vehicles, um, except for when we're changing tethers on deck. How's that for an answer? <laughs> Very political. Both vehicles have remained connected at all times to each other. Oh, neat. So that works. Intermittent. Love it. We got another question. Are you looking for anything in particular at the Seamount or just general investigation? Um, science, do you want to tell everybody what you're looking for? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, totally. We are looking for uh, new species, also for uh, new distributional ranges of uh, new species of corals and crustaceans, uh, associated animals associated with corals like uh, crustaceans, um, polychids, or any other interesting association we can find for the first time. And also interesting things in the geological view. Yeah, on the geology side, we call all those things critters. <laughs> and uh, geology-wise, we're looking for some rocks, primarily basalts, and we're very interested in the age of the basalts when they erupted, because they're rocks that have been uh, erupted for this creating the seamounts. And we're also interested in the geochemistry, or what the, uh, the makeup of the rock is, because that kind of tells us the, uh, the history and origin of these features. So we're hoping to get samples all along the uh, the route going up the top of the uh, seamount and maybe we'll see basalt at the top. Maybe we'll see co old coral drowned reefs. So who knows? That's what's kind of uh, interesting about these explorations. So when you're looking for samples, what are you looking for? Well, what a good sample? Now for the rock samples, we're looking for as fresh rocks as we can get. I mean, that's kind of a <laughs> hard to say because most of these rocks were probably erupted 80 plus million years ago. So what we're trying to do is find the rocks that maybe have been covered and maybe have been exposed during an avalanche or a, a landslide. And we're looking for rocks that are angular. Uh, they don't have a lot of uh, manganese coatings on them. They're very sharp and black. And uh, so we're trying to get as fresh and try to avoid any sort of uh, what they call hydrothermal staining, or maybe a phosphoritic sort of uh, outcrops on it too. So as fresh as we can get, because that's when the uh, the non-squishy rocks is what we're looking for. And biology, what? So we are looking for potential new species to science. Um, um, we are gonna collect those, especially for corals, but also Another scientist from the program are requesting other samples of sea stars Which and, nav? and jellyfishes and crustaceans, but also anything that we found that is of particular interest and new to science, such as um, new associations. I'm particularly interested in squat lobsters, and squat lobsters are closely associated to some species of coral, so it's a group like very diverse, so I'm very interested in finding new species as well. What do squat lobsters taste like? <laughs> I don't know, because I have never tried one. Honest? <laughs> What about those, um, <laughs> remember the langoustine tails from Trader Joe's? Aren't yeah. those kind of squat lobster-esque? Oh. Those tiny lobster tails? So I, I have heard people that um, try soup of a squat lobster, but no uh, squat lo lobster itself. It's not too late to try if we wanted to try them. <laughs> you can bring some up.
what we bring up is purely for science, <laughs> not for taste. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> Yes, Stephanie. What's what I find interesting. I mean, this is the blue water part of the dive, and so there's really not much to see outside the cameras. But what I really like is the uh, Herc and Atalant have instruments on mm -hmm. on them, and they're measuring the temperature, the conductivity that they derive the salinity from that, and they also have the oxygen that they're measuring. And it's always interesting to see how it's a lot of oxygen in the water column dissolved. And then as you get deeper at about 400 meters, you're at a minimum. And then below that, it starts to uh, come up again. So it's uh, that oxygen minimum zone is uh, something very characteristic of the ocean. And in some parts of the ocean, it gets very, very low. And it can be uh, very harmful to the, uh, the critters living in that part of the world. Oftentimes, like the farther east of the Pacific and uh, the Gulf of Mexico, you have these sorts of issues. But this is pretty normal here, what you'd expect to see. And for those listening and interested, as the data logger, I can tell you where the oxygen, min oxygen minimum zone occurred. It was at a depth of around 689 meters, and we got down to 25 micromoles per liter. And right now we are at 1,600, so 1,692 meters. So that was a little while ago, right? Well, we're moving right along, 1,700 meters now. Only 700 more meters to go. Ooh, exciting. So back row, what do you think we're gonna see first? Whale fall. Rocks. <laughs> Whale fall. I'm going all the way for the big money. <laughs> I think we're gonna see rocks. I think I'm gonna see rocks. <laughs> that would be your dream. Here. I think we're gonna see mud. Oh, mud. I don't think we're going to see mud. No? Oh. We brought push course, but I don't think you're going to get mud. No? Well, I, I don't know if we'll collect it. Fair enough. But it would be, I, I really would, if when we get to the nuggets or the nodules, whatever you want to call them, if there's a way to get a push core with a nodule and the, the sediments in it at the same time. Oh, would be really, going for really gold, cool. eh? Yay. All right. What do we have, like uh, five cores? We have five cores, yeah. Yes, indeed. So when you say mud, can you explain what the mud is? Uh, to me, mud is just sediments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's not sand? Uh, actually, it probably is sand. Yeah. It's probably... Someone I mean, told me before it wasn't sand. Well, I mean... It's sand size, it's not, I mean, sand has a, both a size and a compositional perspective. Most of the sand you people think of are beach sand, which is pretty much silica. I'm looking more of the size fraction of sand, sand and mud. And what happens, a lot of the stuff that we see at this, this depth is gonna be uh, old forams or carboniferous plankton. And that when they die, they fall to the bottom, they're preserved in the sediments. So they're like little, uh, they call them tests or shells, and that's pretty much all that what the material is going to be. More than likely, the, these old shells are there of a certain size. That they may not be sticky enough to stay in the uh, the tube, mm -hmm. so it's it's always difficult to get these sediments. Anyone else? Feel free to chime in what they think they're going to see first at the bottom. We got rocks. 
Sand. And whale falls. Whale falls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go for corals. Ooh. But the corals would be on rocks, so it would still be rocks. Okay. <laughs> Manganese covered rocks? That's a good ch choice. <laughs> Ooh. Manganese covered rocks that used to be corals. Then we would all win. <laughs> On top of a whale fall. Yes. We all win. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Everyone wins. Someone asked, how many more minutes before arrival? Are we there yet? <laughs> so we're at um, eight, 1,808 meters, and we're headed to 2,400 meters. So we're close. We're running at 28 meters a minute. I was told there'd be no math. There's always math. So just so all you viewers know at home, we are available for questions. Um, if you're on, if you're watching from nautiluslive.org, you can submit questions.
Um, someone's asking, what do you do with the information you discover? Science? question again please yeah what do you do with the information you discover well um, we gather all the data uh, from the expedition we revise the specimen if they were collected we revise the images and with this got with this data and the data that we previously know uh, we kind of tell a story in a, probably in a article in a scientific article if it's a new species we describe the new species we compare these new species with other species that are closely related and it is uh, some other uh, new associations or ecological associations that are new to science we describe these associations and compare with the previous uh, data that we know and, and for the rocks at least what we do is uh, just check at the quality of it initially. We'll take them into the lab, and if we need to, we'll uh, saw them open with a tile saw that we have on the ship to see how it, uh, what, what the type of rock it is and then how fresh it is if it's for subsampling. And if it's a rock that looks potentially that we can get chemistry or age on, we'll do a subsample and uh, take a small piece for ourselves. It's bad when but messing around. But most of the rock actually gets stored, shipped back to Rhode Island, at the Marine Ge Geological okay, Samples Lab, and they're stored there and cataloged there. And anybody can have access to it if they want to use some sort of a science experiment on it. They can uh, send you a piece or whatever you want. And, and how long do those samples last? The biological samples usually you um, conserve them in ethanol, and it, you can. Like you can curate these samples, like changing ethanol during periodically, so they can last forever or a lot of time. The problem is when we want to study the DNA, uh, the DNA degrades with time. So uh, what we usually do is uh, put the samples in the freezer and with 95% uh, ethanol to get a better um, uh, DNA, better, better pres preservation. For the rocks, it's pretty complicated. <laughs> 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 we put them in a shelf in, a, in an area. And, uh, and for the sediment samples, if we do get those, we actually do store them in a, uh, you know, a one degree, two degree, low temperature uh, re refrigerator system to ca try to keep them at the same temperature they were sampled at. The rock storage sounds ominous. We put them on a shelf in an area. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's very well organized and, and cataloged. And hmm. In a special area. A special area. Yeah, most of the biological samples are going to be stored in the MCC collection in Harvard University. And some of the some samples of the biological samples are stored in freezers at minus 20 degrees. Cool, and we we collect um, mapping data too. We're not doing that now, but what what do we do with the mapping data that we collect when we are mapping? Well, actually, the, the, the video and all the data we collect here is uh, stored at the University of Rhode Island, too. It's in the uh, uh, Center for you know Cooperative Institute, which is ocean exploration. And that data is pretty much anybody can access that, from the multi-beam to any of the data to the video data. And it's, uh, it's online and accessible, free of charge, and uh, anybody can use that. Data is also kept refrigerated. <laughs> <laughs> And on a special on a special shelf. Uh, we just passed two thousand meters. Exciting stuff. 
Exciting stuff. About 10 minutes to go or so. What's that? To those of you watching, um, I can confirm we're receiving messages. I fixed the problem. So um, again, we are open to messages on nautiluslive.org. So while we're still in blue water, do the um, ROV pilots kind of want to describe what you have to do to pilot the ROV down? Down? We just kind of set it up and forget it. That's not completely true, but we set our winch speed and set Hercules descent speed to match and monitor our systems. It's not, not much happening until we get to bottom. A lot of systems to monitor though. I guess the real driving doesn't start until you hit the bottom. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, great question. So we are 2,400 meters expected depth, but that could be plus minus a little bit, uh, depending on how accurate the bottom survey was and depending on where we actually land. So at 2,300 meters, it's a good time to take the stick out. So see, this is just a loose stick in there. And the way you'll do that is you'll take a little bit of tension on the winch joystick and pull it out. You gotta come out the side, otherwise you floss your finger out of there. Okay. And then try to keep it at the same speed. It's easy to like boink it a little bit, so just try to be careful. That's a as technical you floss term. It yeah. <laughs> yeah, a couple things will happen kind of at once, and uh, I'll talk you through them. All nothing, right. nothing happens in a hurry, which is nice. And once we uh, take the stick out, then we'll auto winch until we see the seafloor, or yeah, well you'll or you'll keep manual the winch. manual winch until yeah. until uh, so at some point we'll both have a readout of our altitude. So okay. I'll get that first, and you'll get that next, and we'll make the call of when to stop based on that stuff. I'm seeing an altitude here. Is yeah, that it's wrong. It's wrong. No. Okay. You see it here bouncing around 90, 58, 80, 90, 60, 100, 840. It's just noise. All right. 
I would generally recommend looking here when possible, or of course here when possible, because these are real time. These are about a second behind, okay. which doesn't make a lot of difference, but you can see how bouncy the numbers are, and these are smoothed out. So you can see that this is uh, sensor noise versus this one, which kind of seems a little less noisy. Good to know. Thank you. Yeah. So we're currently at 2,234 meters, which means we only got about 200 more meters to go till we reach our target depth. Then the real excitement begins. Or something. Then we see those uh, manganese-covered rock coral whale falls. <laughs> yeah. With, with sand on them. <laughs> <laughs> or manganese-covered whales. Oh. Ooh. Like live it. whales. Yeah. Oh. I'm being irresponsible. What's the likelihood of seeing a whale fall in this area? Well, it depends who you ask. I don't know about this area, but I have a knack for seeing whale falls. I've seen two of them already, so. That's a good knack. <laughs> Didn't we find a beaked whale skull? Yes, there, um, in a previous dive, there was a, a beaked whale fragment found at the bottom at Johnston. So Meranke, seeing two whale falls is a little more than just coincidence, I'm thinking. Yeah, I might uh, I might just attract them. Are you part, <laughs> part hunter or do you have a license for these things? Or what's the, uh... Unfortunately, I don't. <laughs> I'll have to work on that. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess it's fortunately you don't because we don't want a whale hunter here. No, just hunting the skeletons, not the whales. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sort of like a Ghostbuster, but for whales? Exactly. That could be a whole spin-off show. Hmm? Hmm. Beams. Beams? Yeah, do it, yeah. We've got, uh, I can just listen to you as well. That'll make, make more sense. Yeah, I can mute you. We got beams. We got bottom uh, in acoustic range. So now would be a great time to take that stick out. Cool, I'll take that. Thank you. Like, uh, oh yeah, it's terrible. Go? I'm doing a terrible job. We can slow down on the winch now. Go about 24 is great. Oh, well, I slowed it down a bit more. <laughs> yeah, 16 is fine. Yeah. What you've done. Don't do what I'm doing. This is not role model behavior. Should I move the tilt down to like 90 degrees? You can leave it right where it is. It's oh, I can good. leave it where it is? Okay. Terrible. Terrible job. So you guys said you could see the bottom? With uh, your acoustically, beams? yeah. yeah. Is it with that sonar, that Doppler? Doppler, yeah. Cool. We got, we got four beams. Four beams. Then we're still about like 80 meters out, right? 68 right now. Nice.
Okay, we're starting to see some Argus altitude now, 54, 55 meters. There's the occasional uh, noisy bump, mm -hmm. but it's looking a little more believable now. And when we get near the bottom, when you come to a stop, I'll have you turn on your thrusters, but not yet. Okay. Uh, how close should I get before I lay off the winch? Yeah, great question. So we have a 30 meter tether, so I think anything uh, below 30 we should talk about. We know 30 is safe. In this case, I think we can get away with 20 for now, and then we'll approach bottom after we're finished our setup. Okay, sounds good. We have altitude on Argus, um, around 40 meters. Not Argus, Atalanta. What's he doing? <laughs> Look at all those, I love that. M little scrambly. Yeah. Trevor, you're a comedian, you got people laughing in the comments. Uh-oh. They love you. Yeah, that's great, Rennie. That's much better this way. Okay, we're around 30 meters in altitude. Yeah, you can keep going a little more, probably 10 more meters, and then we'll okay. come to a stop. Uh, with the occasional bump. Here, bottom in sight, neat. Not yet. Looks like we can see the bottom and we got rocks and sand. Annabelle, soon you'll see the on bottom procedure. We got a couple of things we do to get set up once we get down. Um, but you can keep going to yeah, 20 meters altitude. Okay, we're around 20 meters laying off the winch. Great, sounds good. Now, can you please turn on your thrusters and enable them? Okie dokie. Both, th both thrusters? Yes. Oh, look at that. There we go. Both the green part and the gray part work as buttons. This is a potential gotcha there. All right. And then now please turn on auto heading. Auto heading is on. Okay, great. And you can, uh, roger that. You can keep whatever heading you've got there. I'll try to come over towards you and then have you spin in a moment. Okay. I do not see you. Yeah, that's fine. Alrighty. I'll keep an eye out. You should be able to see pretty soon here. Alrighty. Do I need to mess with tilt? Uh, you'll, that'll become obvious soon. Oh, there you are. Hello. Okay, you can bring your heading uh, to 270 approximately, plus minus five or 10 degrees. Um, okay, so. Cool. A little more? Um, no, I'll keep I'll keep moving over. Okay. Dave, can we get some Herc Iris, please? Thank you very much. Okay. Ooh, moody. Uh, Dave's doing the irising. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so 
you can come up on winch a little bit. Come up th th four meters, please. Am I okay for auto XY? Thank you. Ooh, bonk. Yeah, I guess. Is that good? A little more? Yeah, a little more. We can do it and go off delta depth now instead of altitude. Okay. You can set it to uh, probably between 13 and 17. Delta depth? Yes. Is this all right? Yeah. I'd say try to aim for the center between 13 and 17. So okay. 15. All right, going to winch down a little bit more. Uh, winch, you're going to haul in a bit. Oh. Oh. You want the delta depth to be 15. Right. Okay, could you please, using this, could you select the PTZ controller software? Oh, yeah. And then you can click the K for craft. Thank you. Hey, craft. Oops. Okay, we're around a delta depth of 15. Great. Thank you. Video, I'm going to turn on the down light. Copy that. And I'm going to move the camera so I don't hit the... Can I get front porch view on this, please? Gotcha, front porch. Thank you. Make sure I don't bonk the uh, stereo cams. Let's try right about uh, there. Uh, I'm going to tilt up. Okay, give that a go, Dave. you get a wee bit closer? Yeah. Uh, zoom out, please. Oh, yeah. That'll do. Okay. Uh, go for it there. Ah, let me... <laughs> That's the best I can do. There you go. That's all right. Close enough. Time for some new tape. Yeah. Okay. Black balance first. <laughs> We're doing a bunch of camera setup things. It configures it, calibrates it for this dive. Looks good. Meanwhile, I'm trying to trim my up-down pressures. I don't know what I said there. I'm trying to trim my thrusters. Okay, black and white balance complete. Thank you. Can I have craft view on bubble, please? Craft view on bubble. Copy. Can I get a front porch view, please? Front porch view? Wonderful. See if I can... Looks like I'm good for a reset. I've sat here for a while. I'm in auto XY. Let me know when you're ready and I'll come out of it.
Go for it. Wonderful. I'm back in. All right. Well, I think we're ready for science. Science. Yay. I yep. love science. Well, you can sound more excited than that. Yay. Science. So, uh, for your role, Annabelle, um, in current operating configuration, what we're going to be doing is you can keep the heading and the tilt in such a way that it keeps the vehicle centered. doesn't need to be perfect, but just try to keep it in view. If I get wandery off, then try to uh, get it back in view. And if you can't or when I see something weird, let me know. Sounds good. So that's going to be also monitoring your delta depth. And as I go up slope, you're going to need to come up. I'm trying to keep that very lowest I want to see is 13 up to 17, 18. Where you're oh. at right now, 16, 17 is fine. Cool. Um, and after you set the winch, you can set the uh, heading and tilt as necessary. Sounds good. Cool. Yay. You ready, Trevor? We're ready. Yeah, let's just, you know, can we zoom on this real quick? It looks like there might be some biology yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. There are a lot of tracks in the uh, sediment, too. Yeah, great. i got to figure out the best way to align the main camera here so we're not looking at the stereo cameras as well. Probably just slightly off to the right, unfortunately. And then after this, we'll probably just move up a little bit to the upper left. This is good to grab a rock just to begin the process. And yeah, begin the process. I like it. Okay, oh. video, please go ahead and zoom. This is the one you're looking for? Yeah. Is that rock? Yeah, it looks like a rock. Rock. Okay, come okay. wide, please. Yeah, and then up to the left, up in this corner, it looked like there's some... Cool. Some, yeah, up here, just to the very top, they look a little bigger. I mean, I don't think they're ideal, but I think it's always good to get a rock. Yeah, we can give it a poke anyway. And if it crumbles, we'll leave it behind. Yep. And you can see it has a manganese texture on it, the botryoidal. Can you remind me which one it is again, please? Uh, I mean, it just if that was probably easy get. Sure. Or anything up here, too. I'll give you some lasers. You can see how big it is. It's going to be a big rock. You want to start big? Yeah. Fill up the bio box space immediately with one grab? No. Because this isn't going to be a very good rock. Let's just... What's what's this one? That looks that one smaller, okay. pillowy. Sure. I think most of the stuff is just sloughed off from the slope above. Could be. We got some shelf-looking stuff off yeah. to the left too. Angular. Touchdown. The laser one now. Want me to grab that? Yeah, let's try that. I mean, just to see. Okay. Can I have a uh, craft view, please? Craft view. Thank you. Okay, here we go. This guy? Yeah, let's try that. Jiggle it sure. around, poke it with a stick, whatever. Uh, yep. Leave it alone. <laughs> okay. There's, I think, the answer there. Okay, how, how about, about this yeah, guy? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, these are <laughs> part of part of Mother Earth. Okay. Uh, this little gaffer here. Yep. All right, so we've landed on the Earth's crust. My goodness, these are welded together. Yeah, seems to be. That's good data, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of this just welded together manganese seems crust stuff. Seems so, yeah. How would you like to proceed? Keep poking, move along? What do you want to do? Yeah, let's move up to find something that looks maybe a little freer. Sounds good. 
freedom. I'm not encouraged by that ledge material up there. Yeah, okay. It's too thin. Let's uh, move a little bit. And we are at 2,400 meters depth, so we will need to think a little bit ahead about ship moves. So let me know if you're yep. wanting us to start moving up slope or, or Yeah, whatever. let's start moving up slope. Okay, nice and slow so we can still stop for samples. Yeah, just, just initially, and then we can start moving a little faster. Okay. Hey, Nav, can we please get a 30 meter step towards the next waypoint? Well, we're of course going to be waiting a lot. Uh, I can poke at this pile if you'd like. Yep, roger that. Go ahead. Sounds good. Oops. Oh, what was that? Well, well, let's keep going. Yeah. We probably have another uh, five meters, okay. eight meters ahead we can move before yeah, we have to wait on the ship. So yeah, we can also do, do some, that. pardon me? Yeah, let's go ahead, let's move up. Yeah, cool. Let's see what we have. We can also look a little left and right in the meantime. Ship move is called in. We should start seeing that in a minute or two. There's no way the one just below the lasers now is welded, right? I don't know. I mean, it give it a go. It doesn't... There's no way that's welded. I'm really trying to not bonk the camera lenses, which yep. is also scary. Maybe I'm going to move along. There's a little bit of dust here. Okay. I don't know how that came about. No, no idea. Yeah, there's that one right up. It's, it's a, a large one there, but that'd be too big. Yeah, just by the lasers now? Yep. Is that the one you're looking at? Let's give it a go. Are any of these in here? Yeah. yeah. Oof. These cameras right on the porch are really scary. Uh, Tim's back there getting some really close-up views of rocks. <laughs> Think of all the dust footage we'll get. A lot of good dust footage, yeah. We can never have enough dust footage. Ooh, let's come up on Delta, please. Let's go two meters higher. Maybe we can have a standard, instead of a 15 meter target delta let's do an 18 meter target delta all righty yeah i think we may have to wait for a talus slope here yeah i agree coming up on delta yeah so yeah we can just move along look for biology roger that and if we big be a talus slope i mean none of these are very good or juicy anyway they look pretty squishy so not much juice no juice okay This is more of a, a looking for nuggets run anyway. All right, got an 18 meter delta. Wonderful, thank you. And it's top of the hour, so you can do a gauge check. Yippee! And just let me know before you uh, take the bubble cam, but you can you can do it now. Okay. Why do I? Oh yeah. 2100. Speaking uh, of, uh, oh, go ahead. Gonna move bubble to gauges? Yep, cool. You can do all your gauge checks now, and then when you're done, you can put it on the porch. Alrighty, thank you. Thank you. So speaking of those new cameras, is that those cylinders we're seeing at the bottom of the herd cam? Yeah, that's right. Those are the 
stereo camera with a cinematic camera in the middle. It's an experimental uh, instrumentation install for this dive and maybe one or two more. And hopefully they will be used later in the season for some really fascinating stuff. This is their, their test run. Uh, moving to craft. Sure. You can just let me know when, or you can ask when you want to start gauge checks, and then when you're done, just throw it on porch. Okay. That's Thank all good. You. You can also change the iris on that with one of the buttons. So if it's too bright, you can see it, uh, make it darker. I don't remember how one of the buttons does it. The one that says I on it? That sounds like a great candidate. Yay! <laughs> so for all you viewing at home, we finally reached the bottom of the sea floor at 2,400 meters. Um, this is our first dive on the Expedition NA-153, which is at the Johnston Atoll. We're exploring a small, unnamed guillot. Can you zoom in on this? Yeah. Oh, boy, can we. I'm going to turn off the down light. Let's see what that looks like. Yes. Can I have front porch view, please? Front porch? Oh, hello, front porch. Hmm. There we go. Right. Oh, Zeus. It's going to be something. Is it a pen? Okay, video, Ooh. you can zoom in, please. Oh. What do we, what do we got there? What was it? Bouncy. It probably used to be either like a rosellid or a euplectelid stocked sponge of some kind. No, big sponge base, but no yep, top yep. part. Well, maybe looking behind it on the ground. Yeah, come out halfway, please, Dave. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, good there. I can't see much around here. Okay, come full wide, please. Right. Do the tops of those just fall off if they die, or did, could something have eaten it? Probably fell off and disintegrated. Um, but above us in the center, right, there's an acorn worm. We saw one earlier. That's what's making all the tracks is these hemichordates. They're, uh, they're not actually worms.